Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dot to Dot. Today, I'm going to be talking about the swamp, and in particular, the eye of the swamp and the paved area and the stone road. But the eye of the swamp is a very interesting feature on Oak Island. It's definitely uh, has the probability of being man made. And it's interesting that the eye or this little gathering of water, a little pond, is in the northern part or basically the tip of the triangle of the swamp. The swamp is a triangle shape. And this is where they get maybe, you know, it is a sign, a Masonic sign of some type, maybe a Templar sign that goes way back and that it was designed this way. Now, I'm not so sure I buy into that, but it is interesting that it is a feature. So let's go to the episode eight of this year. Uh, they did a magnometer reading in the swamp with the magnetic red resonance. And they discovered that a feature, and you can see he's pointing to it near the eye of the swamp, or it is the eye of the swamp, it is a very highly uh, magnetic a lot of readings coming from that region. So it's interesting that uh, that this area is very much has the potential of having something to be discovered on it. So in, uh, I think it was season seven, they discovered, they drained the swamp and they came upon uh, rock formations around the eye of the swamp. They also uh, detected metal in uh, some of the areas of the swamp. And I think that's where that little red dot is, is where Gary uh, detected metal. But they have rock formations around this opening that goes down into the swamp. And it's, it's very interesting because these, uh, this opening had what is called blue clay. Now, blue clay was also found in the Money Pit area. And it is basically a, a, a kind of clay that is very rare in some cases throughout the, uh, the world. But, you know, it, it's a very, very in-depth subject. Uh, the term blue clay uh, means it was made up of fine sediments that were left by ancient lakes or rivers or volcanic uh, activity. And the one thing about this blue clay is at least one type of blue clay is that it absorbs moisture like a sponge. And then it also expands. So it's a great sealant. If you're trying to seal something or, or waterproof something, uh, you can do it with this blue clay. Now there's, you know, there has been uh, theorized uh, speculation that, you know, the eye of the swamp is a clay mind. Well, that, that to me is not really uh, very credible because this is a very rare thing and it's typically not found in, uh, it, it, or it's not supposed to be found in Nova Scotia. It's something that is basically found in the north or the uh, southwest of the United States and in Mexico. So it's not something that really is indigenous to Nova Scotia. The other thing about these, uh, the eye of the swamp is the large boulders that were found around the eye of the swamp were pretty big. And they equated some of those boulders as large as the ones that are on Nolan's Cross. And you know, the Nolan's Cross boulders were quite big, uh, some of them at least six feet in diameter. And uh, so it's very interesting that these boulders are lining the eye of the uh, swamp. Another thing that was found in the eye of the swamp was that there was a evidence of mercury. Now, in geology, mercury is not very readily found in nature, but uh, the inorganic uh, forms of mercury 
are generally in areas where there's a lot of cinnabar or meta cinnabar, or it's associated with volcanic areas. Now, Nova Scotia has some volcanic areas, but they're all the way up north. They're up in northern Nova Scotia. And there's some volcanic areas that are over on the other, the continent side of the Bay of Fundy. So Nova Scotia, I did not find any kind of real volcanic kind of areas, especially when mercury is associated with having volcanic hot springs or that are connected to uh, volcanic areas through uh, an underground river or something. But one thing I do see happening is that the burning of coal, oil, wood, okay, it emits mercury into the air and then it becomes infused with water or vapor and then it falls as rain. This is one of the, you know, ecological uh, problems with uh, burning coal, uh, oil, and wood is it does cause mercury to become in the atmosphere. But if it was underground, if they were burning uh, coal or wood underground, it would collect on the sides of the tunnels and then it would mix with the water and, and become mercury in the water. And, you know, there are uh, certain mining uh, techniques of where they heat the rocks with coal or embers or fire. And then they douse them with water and the sudden expansion cracks the rocks. So this may be something that may be happening of why there could be mercury in the water. So the stone pathway or the stone, uh, the paved area, you know, it's a pretty big uh, area and they really didn't un uncover all of it, I don't think. And it is pretty deep. It's about three or four feet deep it looks like, but this is the, uh, the nature of the stones. And you can see it's very haphazard. It's, it's, uh, it looks like somebody has taken rubble or, you know, the excavations of stones from tunnels and thrown them in the swamp. And here's one of the big evidences that came up in season seven is that Dr. Spooner found this crushed branch and he dated it to 1200 AD. And this was between two stones in the swamp. And so this gives you a date of human activity. Because if it's between two stones, it means that, that stones were put down. And then this branch fell on a stone. And then something was put on top of it. So it's, it is good evidence. And it makes me believe that there, it had, there was some activity with dumping of stones and debris in the swamp. Well, Dr. Spooner also came back, and I guess he did a, a test on another branch, and he extracted uh, a carbon dating from the second branch as 1674 to 1778. So the conclusion of this would be that there was at least two time periods where there was intense human activity. Once was around 1200 AD, where he found with the first branch, and then a second uh, excavation near the eye of the swamp during 1674 to 1778, about a hundred year period. So, but uh, it's very interesting. This is all scientific, and I believe that. This area is probably, I mean, the most evidence we have about human activity in all of Oak Island. Not even the money pit has this kind of evidence. Another thing about the eye of the swamp is water flows out of the eye of the swamp. And you can see in this uh, video clip from Jerry's aer aerial photography that the, the, the river of the eye of the swamp starts up uh, and you know I've looked at several videos of this and it seems like the the water comes out at high tide I really believe that this eye of the swamp is connected with the ocean 
and possibly the flood tunnel system. Over here, you can see too, you have the excavation of the stone road that was done during this year. But here on uh, season seven, episode 18, the turning point, uh, this is where uh, Rick tastes some of the water that's coming out of the eye of the swamp. And he states that it's, it is brackish. Now, brackish, what does brackish mean? It means that it has more solidity than fresh water and not as much as seawater. And this means that it may be a mixing of seawater and fresh water together. Now, the swamp is a low point and you have a, a bunch of hills um, off to the east. And I'm sure a lot of water drains into that swamp. From rainy season. So it's going to be a mixture of seawater and salt water. So here's the stone paved area, approximately what they excavated. And you can see here's the eye of the swamp. And here's the paved stone, the stone road that they excavated pretty much almost to the eye of the swamp there. Now, where this stone is, why this is here, I believe it's just, it has been transported out of this hole or from some other areas. I think the swamp was a complete dumping zone of excavation from uh, tunneling. And the roads facilitate that dumping. So here you can see, here's the the how close it is to the eye of the swamp. Here's the eye of the swamp. And here's the end of their excavation of the uh, stone road. So it's very close. And it may have gone further up. So in my view, this possibly could be the eye of the swamp, could be a vent, ventilation, and access to when they were basically creating the flood tunnels from the money pit. And in the vault theory, the flood tunnels goes all the way to the vault. So, and that is somewhat, uh, that's 1,141 feet from this point, which is La Hump, and it's west, it would be out here. So midway between that point would be the eye of the swamp. And Water coming out of it could be because it's inadvertently has been connected to the flood tunnel system, or it has, or it is part of the flood tunnel system as somewhat of a uh, relief valve of some kind. But you can see that the money pit area down here is very far away from the eye of the swamp. And the connection could be the flood tunnel system or the tunnel systems because they need to have ventilation between their between this lahamp and the vault and there may have been also a, another ventilation shaft which could have been what i call the what they call the pine tar kiln which is right here in this location right near lahamp so there's all kinds of uh, reasons why the eye of the swamp could be there. There's also possibly another eye of the swamp, which is up here, although it, it doesn't appear uh, to be there for very long. And this could be uh, another ventilation shaft to facilitate the digging that may have been up there. The stone roads... We know there's a stone road down here by the oak entrance and it possibly had went up across and gone into this road right here. But that's the eye of the swamp. That's what we have. It's going to be interesting to see what they find out in this season if they get into uh, looking into the magnetic resonance uh, data that was given this year. Well, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.